You'll notice here that this particular stair is enclosed by a wall on this part of it, but this section is left exposed. So what I could actually do with that, if necessary, is place a railing manually. And the way we do that is just go to the railing tool. We choose what type of railing we want to work with. So I'm going to work with a panel rail in this case, just to make something a little bit different. So I'll place it on the end here. Can't actually do anything with it just now other than drag it around, rotate it. But what I'll do is go back into the settings. And we'll take a look at the graphic editing, because the first option here is to insert nodes. So I'm not actually going to insert a node, but what I'm going to do is use these new hotspots to take this point here and stretch it up until it meets this wall at this end of the section of the stair. If I select the stair and the railing and go to 3D, we can see how it looks. So there's obviously a slight issue here because it doesn't quite come up to where I need it to be. But what I can do is select, pick up this base point, and I can just simply stretch it up until it joins to the correct tread number over here. So if we switch on the rest of the wall and the stairs, etc., you can see this now meets where it should actually meet. While on the subject of graphic editing, what I can also do is go back in and we can now switch. So rather than insert nodes, we can look at changing the arc or the curvature and that allows us to do these sort of things. So that's not something I actually want to do in this case, but what I do want to do is switch on this option here, which is to edit the newels and the balusters. Because what you'll see is I do have a baluster in the middle to break this into two panels, but it's not actually in the middle. So what I can do is pick that up We'll just move it down into its new position, and if we look at the selection in 3D, you can see it's placed where I want it to be. So placing railings around things is actually fairly straightforward. If I revert back to the horizontal rails, I have some geometry over here that I can place a railing around. So I'll start by placing the first point here, and if I look at 3D, you can see what's created. So obviously I need to first of all take this whole thing and simply drag it up until it sits at this first part of the first landing. I drop back to 2D, switch on the option to insert nodes, graphic editing. What I can do is stretch the shape up to the maximum point here. I can then insert a node here and insert a further node down here. And again, if I select and look at 3D, we can then play with the shape. You'll see the points are in place here, but because of the parameters and the rails, I'm not actually seeing any posts yet. But if I pick up and stretch this node up to here, because I've changed the geometry, the various posts start to appear and give me the settings. And of course, as it's a standard object, I can always go back into the settings, change the railings, the posts, the balusters, the rails themselves, whatever needs to be done to make the changes appear. Final part to show is if I drop back in here and we're going to create a timber railing, but what I'll do is switch on Edit the Newels and Balusters. What I can do is drop one in here. And with it selected, there's actually some options available on the newels and balusters themselves. So if I take this middle one, for example, what I can do is pick it up. And if I leave it in place, but use the options to spin around here so that we have a number two selected, what this will do is convert the baluster into a newel post. So you'll see it changes in size. If I take this one here and we have the option then to leave it as a baluster, if I move to the right, we have the option there to physically remove the entire baluster. Or what I can do is just simply move these backwards and forwards to suit whatever the parameters are for the, the object or landing or whatever it is we're working with.